Everybody, welcome to the Multipliers Leadership Podcast. My name is Joseph, and I am so glad you came to join us today. Man, we've got some special guests with us today. Today, my co-host is my wife, Tiffany Elder, so she's going to be on with us today. And then we have a special guest named Brittany Estes, and um, Brittany is a mother to eight children. Yes, I said eight. Um, she is a speaker. She's a life coach, a certified life coach. Um, she's got a full ministry, but not only that, she's wrote a book. She's done a little bit of every, she even runs marathons, if that's your thing. Um, so Brittany, <laughs> welcome to not the Multipliers thing. Leadership Podcast. <laughs> so good. Clearly yeah, there's science for everyone. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes. To, Anybody to, take can your... relate to all of, all of those things, one of them. Yeah, well, well, Brittany, as we as we jump in, um, obviously some of our listeners they're hearing you for the first time or being introduced to you for for the first time. So why don't you just give them kind of a, a good understanding of who is Brittany Essis? Who are we talking to today? I mean, I think you did a great job. Um, what you missed was my life is spent from like running to one thing to the next to the next. So organization is like a necessity, um, but I love that I get to. Um, not only be the mom and raise the eight kids, but I get to work in ministry and help women in the next generation. And literally the Lord has just kind of directed each steps of my calling. And each time, like I'm just kind of held my hand open with a yes and gone from one thing to the next. So um, I will say you mentioned running marathons, like it hasn't always been that way. So Joseph, you and I knew each other back it's, in the day. It's true. For those that don't know, Brittany and I have literally known, and, and I've known her husband as well since we've been teenagers. And wow. so I don't know if we want all of those details and stories in this podcast, but, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so if God but, can use anyone. No. <laughs> yeah. There you absolutely. go. Uh, but you said, you know, I haven't always been a, a runner. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm a runner as well. And some, when they heard you run a marathon, they've already said, this girl is, she's at it. She's not, she's not doing what I'm doing. So um, tell us why in the world do you run? Well, honestly, I always thought the idea of running was kind of cool, but I was like, I don't hate myself that much. I cannot imagine running. Like there's that scripture in Proverbs uh, where, which people have used it on me because I used it too. And I was like the, only the wicked run. <laughs> no, <it's too. laughs> yeah. That's fair. It's my life verse. <laughs> no, literally there was a season when just Sam and I and our family was going through a really hard time at church and. I, at the same time, I was homeschooling seven children, and I thought, I am going to literally lose it. And so Sam came home one day for lunch, and I went out and started running, and it was like my time with the Lord where I would cry, and I would scream. I swear people would drive by, and be like, what is wrong with this lady? <laughs> she needs help. Um, but through that, this was like, oh my goodness, like this is my time. This is my therapy. And I just started loving it and running more, and as I was like accumulating miles, Sam, who used to run, like he was a runner, but then he hurt his knee. So now he cycles. He was like, maybe you should run a half marathon. And I was like, never, never. And then I signed up for one and I was like, oh, I kind of really like this. And then just kind of snowballed from there. So wow. Accidental, wow. accidental I'm, running. I'm impressed. I, I'm impressed right. that that scripture was, is definitely still is my life first. But I appreciate runners. I I love runners because I think it takes so much grit, especially the ones like you all who are doing the half marathons in the marathons, like so much like perseverance and endurance that you learn through running. And I would love to know, Brittany, has, has some of that running even prepared you for where you are today? Or what else has prepared you for like this season of ministry, of coaching, of being a mom to eight? Like what has prepared you for this season in life? Listen, running absolutely, because I know that sounds silly, but yeah, I will tell anyone, like, it's a mind game. Literally, mm -hmm. the moment you think you have to give up, your body can't go any further. Like, you can, you actually can. So you have to, I tell people, like, you put the pain in a box and you say, that's great. I'm just going to ignore you for a hot minute because I got 26 miles to do. <laughs> and then you're like, it, it's fine. Like, I can do this. I'm trained for this. It's not too hot. My legs are not going to fall off. And you just keep going. And I think that's such a good thing for us one as believers but two as leaders to say it's going to be hard and some days you're going to want to quit and it makes no sense and you're coming up against obstacles and no's or whatever but you're just like no I'm gonna put that in a box you know I may quit for a day fine that's great but I'm going to continue to go because the calling like Ephesians 4 1 live a life worthy of your calling like we will live a life worthy of that so I'm going to continue to show up because even in the mess ups or the whatever 
it's a story that the Lord gets to be glorified in. So like in my marathon, the last one that I ran, it was so hard. There were so many issues or whatever. And I had decided to put on like my jersey, mom of seven. And people were like, oh my gosh, mom of seven, mom of seven. And I was like running on this course going, I want my kids to be so proud because there were so many times where I thought I will not make it. Like I had porta potty stops, not for the good reason, if you know what I mean. Um, and I was like, I, my body is like waging war against me and this, but I'm going to continue to show up and to run. And as I crossed the finish line, I was like, I want them to know that I didn't quit and I need them to do the same thing in sports mm-hmm. or in school or whatever life is like, it's not easy. You know, when people see a ministry or they see a medal from a race or they see a book deal, they think that was so easy. She can do it, but it's so hard for me. And I want to be like, no, it was so hard. The only difference yeah. is I didn't quit, you know? Mm-hmm. I love how you said, help. I need them to do the same thing. Like, I need them to do the same thing. I once heard a women's ministry leader say, you know you're a teacher when you learn something and you have to pour it out into somebody else. And I think that I definitely Absolutely. see that in you, Brittany. Like, 100% mm-hmm. as, a, as a teacher, as a leader, as a life coach. And for you, I also know that you have a passion to pour that into like young adults Mm -hmm. and women specifically. What has drawn you to those to those groups? What's drawn you to that passion in your life? Yeah, uh, well, women was kind of accidental. Like I've always felt a stirring and um, loved teaching and stuff. And um, Sam and I worked at a church together where we were both in kids ministry. And then there was like some restructuring and and things like that. And the head pastor was like, have you ever thought of women's ministry? And I was like, huh, that sounds fun. Let me give it a go. And as soon as like I started, it was like the floodgates open and the Lord was like, and here it is. And it just kind of lit a fire. And through that, I began walking out what I was asking women to do. Like, let me mentor you one-on-one. And I had like a group of younger girls that I was working with and mentoring. And um, just in one week's time, two of them just kind of, literally cracked and one tried to end their life mm-hmm. and the other had a very public nervous breakdown where we had to call the cops and stuff and um like I witnessed that and I thought what the heck is happening mm-hmm. um and it was through that that I realized I was spending my days teaching mm-hmm. and preaching and coaching women my age who were struggling with their purpose with their worth with their calling like all of these things and I was like oh my gosh we're so self-focused because we don't have it together that we can't turn to this next generation who is grappling with way more than we ever did at this current mm-hmm. moment to help and rescue them. And they're drowning, like literally right in front of me, they were drowning. And I thought, I can't do that anymore. I can't sit on the mm-hmm. sidelines. So I was like, I'm going to start charging after them. I'm not going to forget about you, but I need you to get it together so then you can help me charge after them. And so it was just kind of literally like a, here's my yes in this season. And then this yes turned into this. And I've just I have a motto that I don't want to arrive safely unto death. Like I want to give it mm. all and not leave anything left. And that's just mm. in this season. Like I will fight and I will hunt and I will save and I will rescue. Obviously with the Lord's help, anyone who put, he puts in front of me. So, so good. I, I, yeah, I love that. And there, there's so many layers there that are incredibly good and deep waters, obviously that are there too. Um, but one of the things that I love that you said is just the recognition that, I mean, there's a desperate need for somebody to be able to pour into, but also yeah. call out the best from within somebody. Um, yeah. And that's really, that's a heart for Tiffany and myself, but that's even a heart for us mm-hmm. within the Multiply family is across the globe, even on the international scope, being able to say, where are the leaders that just need somebody to come alongside to pull out the best with them and say, hey, you're not by yourself. You have friendship, Absolutely. you have a relationship. You have resources, um, and and I think I mean maybe maybe I'm pushing the envelope here, but I think there's a piece of every single one of us that have that same calling, is to be able to say, sure. how can I pull out the best within there? And and you've done yeah. that in several different ways. Um, one of which is in the coaching context, and I know many of our listeners um, they um, they have a coach, whether it's a personal coach uh, for health or a variety of different reasons, or they have a professional coach. Um, in their lives. And so, Brittany, I'd love for you to speak into that um, for those that maybe even don't or considering, like, why in the world would you need a coach in your life? Um, That's a great question and one I get a lot. And the best way I like to explain it is um, you sit and you can look at a problem from one one perspective. But the beauty of bringing someone else is that they can see it from a different line and say, this is actually the truth of scenario. Like, let me walk beside you. Let me call those things 
Um, you go to a dentist to help keep your teeth up. So you don't have cavities. You don't have things like that. You, you go to a chiropractor to help your body stay in, in alignment. Like you grab a coach to say, this is what I'm passionate about, or this is where I'm struggling. Let me help you find breakthrough. Like it's just a very natural part of life. Like I have had coaches before. So even the coach needs a coach sometimes, Um, Mm -hmm. but it's so helpful because it's easy when you're seeing it in yourself to miss everything, like the potential, the possibilities, because you're stuck with the problems. Um, And Mm -hmm. sometimes those problems can be masked in like, I have this beautiful idea and this beautiful vision and you're running there and we're like, hold please. Like there's some, some areas that you're not seeing that maybe we need to step into before it becomes a problem. Um, so I think it's beneficial for anyone to have a coach for sure. It's really good. Yeah. Agreed. I love that you said that it's easy to miss your own potential and just like the importance mm-hmm. of putting an outside yeah. voice in that. It is easy to miss your own Preach. potential. And I'm going <laughs> to hang on that for a second because looking from the outside in at Brittany and social media, you you are very good about being open of your own like struggles or insecurities yeah. or moments. But if you're just really, if you're not really reading into those details on the posts and you're just looking at Brittany, you think, oh man, this is a very bold, very confident woman, um, woman of God. And I know that you had to, like, you probably had your own journey in that and finding your voice oh, and finding who you, you are um, in Jesus and your identity. So, and to walk in confidence in that. So I'd just love to know, like, what did it take for you to, to you, for you to get to that point and be able to walk in that, what I call godly confidence? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you asked because I think that's one of the biggest things that I fight against um, is people assuming that this is how it's always been and I can never get there and that's great for her, but I'm stuck in this. And I want to be like, absolutely not. This is why I can act like this. And there was a season where um, I think my whole life I've noticed a line and here's here's how Satan works really well is you will have an instance happen and then all of a sudden you can see the lit path through your history of validating these lies and this truth. And so my problem, Mm. my struggle was, I always felt like there was something wrong with me. So Mm. being extra and excitable, like I was a theater major, I did all those things. Like Joseph knows, like this was me. Like I loved being on the stage and doing the things and growing up and right, right. And where I did in church and things like that, there was always a rub with where women were allowed to be in church and stuff. And I'm not going to get into those dynamics, but it just helped feed this narrative of Mm -hmm. why would I be so good like this? Why would I love to do these things? And I wasn't allowed to, or I would have issues with friends and it would be like, it's because you're too loud or you're too whatever. Um, But there was one particular time when we were at a church and the pastor literally sat Sam down and said, basically, you won't have a job if you cannot get your wife under control. She was attention seeking. She's prideful, looking to build her own name. Um, And if you don't get her to submit and sit on the sidelines and sit on a pew with her children and be quiet, then you won't have a job. And it Mm -hmm. wrecked me. One, it wrecked Sam as the husband going, I don't see any issue with her jumping on the stage with me and wanting to be excited and do these things because we always saw ministry Mm -hmm. together. Like we would work Mm -hmm. together for for this. Like it was a family ordeal. And Uh for it to be like she do this and then me on the other hand going oh my gosh like our security and our livelihood depended on how I behave and it Mm. wasn't like I was doing anything wrong now I will say there's probably some ownership that I needed to take in that and I have but I sat and I looked and I was like what is the problem and it caused me to go into like a hiding where I would show my phone to Sam am I allowed to post this on Facebook am I allowed to wear this to church am I Mm. whatever and it was such a crazy season where I just literally Mm shut everything down, everything that I known. And I was like, I, I can't do it. And the Lord had to literally rebuild me. Um, I love the verse, um, Mark 5 41, where Jesus raised Jairus's daughter from the dead. And he says to her little girl, I say to you arise. And there was a moment where I felt like the Lord was saying like, this is your time. I'm telling you to arise. Mm-hmm. And it was from that where we just, he and I built this solid foundation that was during my running period where I was like, this is who I am. And the more I embrace who he has created me to be, the more freedom that I live in. And that freedom is contagious to others. So I will not be sad about that. I mean, I will trust that the Holy Spirit want to guard me and guide me and I'm going to mess up and he's going to correct me. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I can't live 
in fear or in hiding when I understand that other people's freedom depends on it. So I stand in that confidence now going, awesome. Like he and I are tight. Like we're, we're running and this is how he's made me. And I want mm -hmm. you to be how he's made you, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. good. I know so many female leaders out there can relate to yeah. a lot of what you just shared in your story. So I think that's mm -hmm. a message that can definitely resonate with a lot of women. Yeah, yeah I think it's definitely definitely spot on. And, and what I, I hope the listeners are hearing is it's what, if even for Brittany, it's walking in confidence of who God's created her to be, um, mm -hmm. not yeah. to walk in um, um, it, more of an antagonistic against against the grain. We have to go against the the person, Absolutely. whoever the person, the thing yeah. is. But but into who God's called her to be, and and Brittany, just because we have the the platform, and we I know we have listeners that are listening right now, whether a mom or a dad, um, and they've got those little ones. They've got the um, that they want to instill the very things they've gone into. Mm -hmm. And because I know that's such a passion for you, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't ask the question of, um, man, how, how would you encourage a parent to, to speak to whether it's their, maybe even just their teenage daughter and say, uh, man, how do you, how do they speak to them to let them fully walk in the freedom of who God's created them to be? What would you say to that? Yeah. Um, I'd say your first responsibility is to actually live it out because you can say all the things, mm -hmm. but if you're not actually living in that direction, then what you're saying is falling on deaf ears. So if you're wanting your daughter to love her body and who she is and how she's grown up to be, you can't be standing in front of the mirror going, I wish I was five pounds thinner. Man, my nose is too big or this or that because you can't preach to her that he's made her in his image. And then you right. stand and look at that same image of God questioning everything about it. So it starts mm -hmm. in how you, then as you do that, you say, you see, this is who you are. You see, this is what he says. And you start calling out those qualities that the Lord has blessed her or him or whatever child in. And you remind them like, there may be lies. There may be people saying all these things, but where do you come back to for truth? And I always tell my children, you come back to God for truth. You come back to the word for truth and you come back to us. Safe people get to speak into your life. People who don't know you or don't understand or who are like pleading, they don't get a say. You come back to mm -hmm. those who do know you. Uh, uh, that's a, that's a really good line. Safe people get to speak into your life. That's for somebody that's listening today, um, is to know who are the safe people in your life. And there is you, there is something so special about being able to speak words of either affirmation or identity over your children. Yeah. And, Ooh, yeah. and so for, <laughs> for the, the dad, for the husband that's listening, your word has weight, especially yeah. for your kids. And for the mom that's listening, your weight, your word has extreme weight. Um, mm -hmm. And so my encouragement to all of us as we're listening is, man, let's be mindful of the words that we speak over our kids. And Brittany, we've only touched a small sliver of really some of the things that you've been involved in, but you, you did something big recently. Uh, yeah. You, were, you wrote and you released your very first book called Flip yeah. the Script. You've got to take us in like, where did this, where this book idea come from? Like, take us to the beginning a little bit and tell us a little bit more of how in the world did all of a sudden you become an author? Yeah. So I was actually working in the life coaching process and I was getting certified. Um, and I went to like the retreat with all the new coaches. And as I was sitting there peer coaching someone, I was trying to explain like the idea of urgency to her because she just felt kind of flippant about it or whatever. And I was like, no, but like, what does your heart beat for? And I was explaining that moment when I woke up one morning a few years prior and the Lord really hit me with that revelation that we kind of talked about earlier, um, right after those two girls had kind of like snapped, um, I was sitting there and he mm -hmm. was like, do you not see, here's the problem. And that's when my eyes were open. And as I was explaining it to her, I was getting all hot and bothered about it again. And she was like, maybe, like, maybe this is a thing for you. And I was like, oh, maybe it is. And so over those few days at our coaching retreat, the Lord was like, and now I want you to write a book. And that kind of began the process of what really is the problem? How do I address it? How do we move from mm -hmm. here? Because I didn't want it to be something. We have all these books with giant, grand, idealistic things full of stats and scientific deals or so heavy on the word of God. And I think it's great, but we miss the mass market of people or the younger generation. And so I was like, I want to come right. at this idea with truth science and life. And we're going to base it heavy on stories because if you just give facts and some people can't see themselves in the picture. And I wanted to be like, here's how I've walked through it. Here's how other people I've walked through it. And 
um, I just began building from there. So like my entire coaching process is helping people identify the lies. So I say I'm an inner dialogue coach. I help people identify the lies, flip them and replace them with truth. And that can fall into a mother that can fall into teens. I've coached teens as well. That can fall into business owners because at some point in your life, you're believing a lie that's holding you back. One from the potential or the thing that God has called you to, or two, it's crippling you and causing you not to be able to find freedom. Um, and that's how I just kind of began flip the script. Where are the five biggest lies that I'm noticing um, people are playing into? I say women was how it started. And the Lord was like, that's a joke. It's for <laughs> like, it's yeah. for men too. Um, right. It is. It's good. It is. I, I read the book. It's incredible. And I love how you say you're an inner dialogue coach because how I described your book is every chapter feels like a coaching session in a, in such a like yeah. good and positive way. So if anybody's out there who does not have a coach and you want to see what would this even Start look there. like, you need to get her book and just like get a little taste of what what a life coach or I love the inner dialogue coach uh, that she said what that's like because that's what this book is. And your stories, I love how you include stories in it. I've told you this before, Brittany, but even even back to the beginning of this this podcast and we say all the things that you are involved in or interested in are do, and there's something in there for everybody. And in your stories, yeah. there is at least one story in her book that anybody can relate to. And your stories make you feel like you're there in the moment and you can definitely put yourself there. So an incredible book, anybody who who wants to see what a coaching session would feel like and hasn't is really considering adding that to their life, you need to read this book, Flip the Script, Make Your Move from Broken to Brilliant is the name of the book by Brittany. And it's incredible. So definitely go go and get that book. And Brittany, just, just leave us off with one last thing. You have a lot going on in your life. The amount of things that we've listed from running to eight kids to coaching to being a published author to ministry like how do you do it what what's your secret um a lot of sleep and jesus you know i love it um, i'm way back up you said a lot of sleep <laughs> yes yeah. uh, we only have a lot of kids sleep. we get zero <laughs> yeah i don't have anything how do you do you're gonna get a lot of sleep then all right talk all to us those. talk to us yeah, coach talk to like <laughs> older they're, they're older they're seen Hey, yeah. So they're older. Yeah. So I get that they're sleeping younger kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess also in sleep, like I I love naps and I love sleeping. Sam jokes all the time, my husband, that he can go on like four to five hours of sleep, but Brittany needs like a solid eight to nine hours. So I'm Brittany. always like, I'm a I'm a seven yeah. and I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. But when it's time to go to sleep, I'm like, deuces, good night. <laughs> no idea. Like, I've hit my well, I've been, I'm done. Right. Like the party's been fun, bye. And then I have to like justify the FOMO that I have because I'm kind of like, um, but I just love sleep so much. Um, but I said that like jokingly, but also in the sense, I think in this season, it's, I don't want someone to hear and go, she's doing all the things and she's doing them well. And I don't have the capacity for that. And I don't think anyone honestly has the capacity for that. So I don't want them mm -hmm. to hear that and think I need to run faster. I need to do more. Um, realistically in this season, I've had to step back some and say, I can't. We have recently just um, adopted my nephew. We have recently just moved, like all within the same month, by the way. We've moved, mm -hmm. um, we've started a new job, and we've adopted my nephew. They had just started school this week, and um, that's a lot. Waking up at 5.30 when that's you're used to waking up at like 7, that's a whole deal. Going a full day without a nap <laughs> um, <laughs> and working and yeah. navigating eight kids and school and stuff like I'm exhausted and that's okay. So what I say is, what do I need to give up in this season? What makes priority? And my children take priority. My husband take priority. Um, this job that pays me, that takes priority. And so I'm going to be okay with pulling back because we have to value our health first. And if we don't, yeah. then we're not going to be here to do the job that God has called us to. So Survival means mm -hmm. being wise about when you need to step back and when you need to move forward. And for me right now, it looks a little bit like, let me hunker down for a moment, you know. Okay. So Hey, even Jesus slept during a storm on a boat. So, yeah, I love it. I love sleeping mm -hmm. during storms. <laughs> <laughs> I will give a, a shout out to our founder, um, Josh Foliar. If you've ever had a meeting with Josh and missed it on accident, slept in because he always has early meetings. 
um, he will share the verse that God gives rest to those who need it. And I received that verse for myself and my life. Um, <laughs> Brittany, I, I, I want to ask one last bonus question because I think there's, there's a little bit more that I want to uncover. I think is there, um, talked about family being priority. Um, and obviously your family is, is a prime focus for you, but, um, for you as, as a parent, like what, what legacy do you want to leave in your family? Like as your kids come at, as they move on out of the house, like how, how is it that you, how can you look at it and say, this is when I know that I've succeeded as, as a mother or as a wife when it comes to my family and that dynamic? Yeah. Um, I think it, obviously I want them to have a firm and strong faith. Um, whatever that looks like. Um, I know I'm not raising eight doctors or eight lawyers. Um, some of my children have very different aspirations. They may want to be a mechanic or a cosmetologist, and that's beautiful. So yeah. um, I want them to, one, feel supported and loved in the direction that God is calling them to and not like we fought against them. Um, I want to help build that mm -hmm. security now for them um, as well as for them to have the security in their faith, like ownership of it, because there's so many... Um, and I think it's kind of a natural process, but I want to help ease that process. Like when you step out of the home, it's kind of like, is this my faith? Will I do like, where's my ownership? Yeah. In it? And so we're trying to build that ownership in it now. But one step further, I want them to just have a holy boldness, whatever that looks like, to not be afraid to say yes when God has asked them to do something that sounds crazy and off the wall or maybe never done before. Like, that's okay. But if he's saying do it, then do it. If he's saying stop, then stop. Um, because I want a group of leaders, you know, like whatever that looks like for them. Yeah. I don't want them to conform to what everyone else says they should because there's so many people who are missing their potential and who are missing their future and who are missing like breakthroughs in the kingdom and in the world, in the marketplace, mm -hmm. because they're afraid to say yes. So I'm trying to like, okay, this sounds sure. crazy. Like right now they ask it or they say it. And I'm like, explain to me more. Tell me the motivations yeah. behind that. Let's talk through this. Because it's so easy as one to be like, well, that's crazy. You're never going to do that. Well, I'll be yeah. doing death over them. But yeah, death, um, yeah. I think that's what I would like for for my kids. I, I think that that's a great framework. And um, for those that are listening, if you want to know a great question to ask your kids, tell me more. That's going to be a go-to question for you uh, to be able to understand their heart and where they're from. Uh, hey, as, yeah. as we wrap up, I'm going to give you one last, or I'm going to give us one last uh, thought or to go back at the very beginning. Brittany said when she runs, I said, a mother of seven kids on the back. And she said, I want the, I want the names of the people on my Jersey to be proud. And I would yeah. say that for all of us as listeners is that we all have a race to run. Even Bluey this morning told me that, Hey, you have your own race to run uh, for my, my two year old <laughs> kid. Uh, but we all have a race to run. And good so show. it is a good show. So <laughs> run in such a way that, um, that your kids, that your family, um, and that even the Lord can just be proud of the journey that you're on. Um, Brittany, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We're so thankful to be able to have you join us today. Hey, if you, if running inspired you today, hey, look out on the Multiply Global website um, in the next couple of weeks. If you're listening to this live time um, in September 2023, we've got a great virtual challenge that's coming your way. So be on the lookout for that. Hey, other than that, hey, we're so thankful again. We'll see you guys in another couple of weeks. Brittany, thank you again for being on the podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me.